Okay, we want to move on now to basically kinetic theory. Okay, what do we mean by kinetic theory and maybe why do we have to mean something? Um, on kinetic theory, what we mean is we're unsatisfied with um, the usual description in terms of three real space variables, x, y, and z, or capital X vector, or whatever. Uh, namely, we want to move on to six-dimensional phase space. Because we have been, keep getting into, if you noticed, situations where we said, well, we got some anisotropy in velocity space, or we've got a loss cone, or we've got a bump on a tail, or something like that. And we need to be able to develop some mathematics and techniques for being able to handle that. So in addition to the three real space coordinates, which we often just label with x vector, we need to have three velocity space coordinates, vx, vy, vz, you know, three velocity space coordinates. And, of course, we want plus time. So instead of having a density as a function of x and t, what we need is a phase space density. And so that is called the distribution function f. And we'll just kind of briefly talk about what we mean by distribution function here. So distribution function is going to be some function of x, v, and t. That's six-dimensional phase space plus time, or three real space coordinates and three velocity space coordinates. If I have that distribution function, how do I obtain the plasma density? Well, just look at the functions. They eliminate the three variables on v, right? And, but pragmatically, how do I eliminate? I want to add up all the particles in all positions in velocity space. So what I will find is that the density, which is going to be still a function of x and t, is the integral over all velocity space of the x of x, v, and t. And what do I mean by that integral over all velocity space? Well, what I really mean is all three velocity space coordinates, dvx, dvy, dvz, and then I've got an f of x, and then it's got a vx, vy, vz, t. So it's this kind of ugly uh, triple integral. Is f a probability distribution? Well, not really, in, in velocity space, that is. Not really. Rather, if I were to define, so let's say I define f and then divide it by density. So, well, by the way, what units does it have? Well, the units here, the, the distribution function, is it's the number of particles per, okay, it's clearly per unit velocity space. So it's per centimeters cubed seconds or to the minus 3. So that takes care of my three velocity space coordinates. And then it's clearly because when I finish integrating over the three velocity space coordinates, it's still a function of per, uh, oh, we're in MKS, so we ought to say meters cubed, right? So uh, per meter cubed seconds to the minus 3, and also per meter cubed. So in total, it's number, okay, seconds cubed meters to the sixth, over meters to the sixth, if I really want the dimensions of it. Anyway, um, so if I want to define a probability distribution uh, in V, what I need to do is take this distribution function and divide by its normalization after I integrate over velocity space. And so I will call that f hat of x, v, and t. And that will be the distribution function, f of x, uh, v, and t, divided by the density as a function of x and t. And then we will have the situation that the integral over all velocity space of that distribution function 
is equal to 1 because all I've done is divided by uh, the integral of the distribution function, basically. So that's just a matter of some definitions. Now, the classic distribution function we use, sort of if in doubt what distribution function do you use, is the Maxwellian. Why do we do that? Well, we're not quite proper in this, but the philosophy is if we had some collisions, that would cause the plasma to be Maxwellian. However, we then go along and we say, well, let's take an equilibrium plasma, and now let's see if it's unstable on a time scale fast compared to those collisions which were going to give us the Maxwellian distribution function. But that doesn't really inhibit us. We just think, well, you know, I prepared the thing someplace else in a pristine way, and it got all to this collisional equilibrium, and then I let it become unstable. It's a little bit of a tricky thing. But nonetheless, for various reasons, let's say, consider the Maxwellian distribution function. Because that is the distribution function that is first Coulomb collisions uh, drive the distribution function to who you can show in fancy kinetic theory. But pragmatically, you, you all know that the Maxwellian turns out to be what most things go to. So anyway, the Maxwellian distribution function is a function of V uh, is equal to, it's an isotropic in velocity, doesn't depend on direction as long as it's not flowing, and we usually don't talk about flowing Maxwellians. It's the density times mass over 2 pi temperature to the 3 halves power, E to the minus mv squared over 2t. But we can also write this as N and then uh, e to the minus. Now, it's always convenient to have exponents as e to the minus v squared over something. And the something is what we often call, you know, this thermal velocity squared, e to the minus v squared over v thermal squared. And then if you do that, you'll notice this 2t over m is the same factor as up there. So you're down in the denominator, you get pi to the 3 halves v thermal cubed. So it's just two different ways of writing the Maxwellian distribution function. What is then the probability distribution which we had before? Well, f hat, and just all I have to do is, you remember I divide out the density. So it just becomes e to the minus v squared over uh, v thermal squared, all divided by pi to the 3 halves v thermal cubed where here I've called V thermal is 2T over mass, or alternatively, VT is the square root of 2T over mass. Some additional little points. Uh, v squared here is, of course, VX squared plus VY squared plus VZ squared. And we might note that an integral from minus infinity to infinity of dV over V thermal, let's say dVx, e to the minus Vx squared over V thermal squared is equal to root pi. And this root pi is, of course, just exactly the one that cancels that pi to the 3 halves so that we get our proper normalization here. Now, why did I choose V thermal as square root 2t over m? Why did I, you know, why did I choose that? Well, the real reason is because mathematically convenient because then this makes it e to the minus v squared over v thermal squared. I don't have any extra funny factors. But it turns out there's lots of definitions of some typical thermal velocities. So let me uh, tell you about a few of those. So let's write those down. So let's call this sum definitions of, let me call them, typical velocities or speeds, really. You know, what's the thermal speed in a plasma? Well, you can imagine that you could ask in one direction. You, should, you could say, well, I want to have the average of Vx. What would that mean? Well, that would mean that I take the integral dQv 
of the absolute value of Vx times F. And it turns out if you do that up, you can show that this is the square root of 2t over pi m. Okay? The pi is sort of... Uh, that should be f hat at this point. Yes, good point. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, what if I wanted the absolute value of v? Or, well, the average of v. Well, that would be the integral dqv of the square root of vx squared plus vy squared plus vz squared. And that, it turns out, you work it out, is 2 times the square root of 2t over pi times mass. It's also not particularly the most important, the nicest one. What about vrms, root mean square, which would be v squared averaged, but then take one half. Average over the distribution function, v squared, but then take its square root. Well, that turns out to be uh, the square root of 3t over mass. Now, that one has its advantages, or well, all of these do to some extent, in that particularly in, for example, uh, fission neutronics, people talk about a random flux. And how does that relate to all this? Well, it turns out that's a half n vx bar, or if you just look and note that there's a factor of 2 between those, this is 1 quarter n v bar, which is what people often refer to the random particle flux is a quarter n v bar. That's counting both directions and so forth. But none of these came up with the one we kind of liked here, which was just, you know, V thermal is equal to the square root 2T over M, which made our mathematics simple. So what one is that? Well, it turns out we'll come back to this in a moment when we integrate over velocity space, and I'll show you the, the Jacobians of the of transformations. But if you ask for the most probable speed, and I'll show you why that is in a moment, then that turns out to be uh, V thermal uh, is this V thermal is equal to the square root of 2T over M. And the basic idea is you end up plotting V squared E to the minus V squared over V thermal squared versus speed. Uh, this is the Jacobian in velocity space. And this is then uh, that probability distribution function in speed space, taking account of the angles has its, its maximum, the most probable speed, is in fact then V thermal, this square root 2 T over M. Now, all of this doesn't make really too much difference. I mean, all these factors are no more than a factor of 2, right? But at least there's an element of consistency. You get into this, and you might end up with a V thermal to the fifth power in some calculations. So you'd like to be consistent, you know, uh, factors of 2 don't hurt too much, but uh, depending on what you're doing. But getting it to the fifth power could make things kind of uh, not too pleasant, let's say, as far as accuracy goes. Now, let's go back. What sorts of distribution functions might we anticipate that we could have? So let's talk about uh, types of distribution functions. And for this, what I will do is just sketch some of these for you. And by sketch, I'm limited in that I'd only like to plot them in two dimensions. Making three-dimensional plots is hard on me. So what I'll do is I'll give you contours. Uh, what we'll do is we'll show contours of constant distribution function uh, f, okay? So f equals some particular value. Now, uh, and I'll only do it, uh, I should say, in two velocity space coordinates in 2D. So our first case, almost always, is the Maxwellian distribution. And the question then 
is what does a Maxwellian distribution function look like in, say, Vx, Vy space? What, do, what I mean by that, by that is what do contours of constant distribution function look like? Well, it's effectively just a Gaussian distribution, but with uh, an equal in all, going down equally in all directions and with some normalization. So what that means is actually going down in the same rate in all directions is that I'll actually, this pen doesn't seem to be working too well, uh, I'll just have contours that are circles in velocity space. Where's the thermal velocity? I don't know. But on the other hand, you know, maybe there's some, maybe this is particular value for which we have the thermal velocity. So I'll just put that on there. I've still got particles at greater than that. And if I, for instance, did a little sketch of the distribution function, Maxwellian, uh, as a function of only this one coordinate, Vx, then it will be just some Gaussian or bell-shaped curve about zero. That's if I cut through the center. What if I cut through here? It's also that, okay, just with a different normalization. So I can cut through at any value of Vy, and I'll always get what should be a symmetric Gaussian distribution function, okay? A little hard to draw. Okay, suppose now, as another case, consider that we had a, what's often called an anisotropic Maxwellian. where what I mean by that is that let's say that the temperature in the y direction is greater than the temperature in the x direction, but they're individually Maxwellians. Okay? So what this means is, in some sense, I have a Gaussian spread in both x and y, but in some sense, the Gaussian spread in the y direction is a little more spread because of higher temperature, than that in the x direction. So I'll just get contours that look more or less like ellipses. Where's the thermal velocity? Well, I can only answer in any given direction because there'll be a thermal velocity in the x direction and a thermal velocity in the y direction. Some other cases. What about a drifting Maxwellian, often with or flowing? I like the word flowing a little bit better, so let's say flowing Maxwellian. A Maxwellian that includes a flow velocity. What would that look like? Well, let's say it's flowing in the x direction. What that means is that the distribution function would be centered around a non-zero value of Vx, but it would still have all these circular distribution functions. So if we do that, and I'm going to have back an isotropic uh, Maxwellian, or the regular Maxwellian, so I'll just have circles. And maybe I'll need to get up to get enough here to get back to the origin. Those are all supposed to be nice, clean circles. Now, finally, because I'm running out of room on this particular thing, how about a bump, uh, bump on tail, as it's called, uh, or a bump on or beam on tail of a Maxwellian, it turns out, distribution. And we'll be dealing with this in a while. What does this mean? Well, first we'll assume we have a Maxwellian around the origin, ordinary, regular, big Maxwellian. Again, you can imagine that these are nice, clean circles, even if you can't necessarily see that. So this is Vy, Vx. And then let's suppose we have a beam drifting relative to this, but it's very small amplitude 
or very you know weak beam or something like that. So we might have a little beam centered about here, and it'll have its own little distribution function around there. And then finally, I might get some complicated contour that's around both distribution functions that looks like that. So this would be a bump on tail instability or a beam on the tail of the Maxwellian distribution function. Now what kind of velocity space coordinates am I going to want to deal with this? Do I want x, y, z? You know, normal Euclidean space, Cartesian space, Euclidean geometry. Well, for the most part, I do. Um, but really, I would like a kind of spherical velocity space coordinates if I'm dealing with a Maxwellian because all directions are equal. And so I'll take account of that in my spherical velocity spaces. Or alternatively, if I'm in a magnetized plasma, you know, particles go gyrating around a field and along the field line is different than the two directions perpendicular. And then I'll be interested typically in a cylindrical velocity space coordinate system, one coordinate along the z-axis, the other two's perpendicular. So let me write down those uh, Jacobians for us, just to kind of remind us here then what we'll need in a while. And so the idea is, uh, let's call this velocity space coordinate systems. And the first one that's very useful is so-called spherical velocity space. And let's say this is useful for isotropic distributions. It means they have no angular dependence. Okay, All directions are equal. Then our integral over all velocity space, which ordinarily would be just an integral over v, dvx, dvy, dvz, we'll put in the spherical velocity space coordinates. And I'll write it out and then tell you what it means. So it'll be integral 0 to 2 pi d little phi, uh, integral 0 to 2 pi d theta with a Jacobian sine theta, and then the integral from 0 to infinity of v squared dv. Now, if this looks a little bit unusual, Remember that if I were doing spherical co coordinates in real space, this would be phi, there would be theta, and I'd have an r squared dr. Okay, I'd have a d theta uh, sine theta. So in fact, all I'm doing is having the same thing, but in velocity space coordinates, as I would have in real space coordinates. Now. It's at this point that I can notice that if I now have an integral over all velocity space of some distribution function for, for some distribution function f of v, which is isotropic, that I could write this, then my 0 to 2 pi here will give me 2 pi. This integral, I should have left myself a little room. Um, this can also be written as an integral from minus 1 to 1 of d cosine of theta. I'm sorry. The, by the way, the, you know, the, this is not from 0 to 2 pi. It's only from 0 to pi because we go from vertically up to vertically down, not all the way around. Sorry. So and then this goes from minus 1 to 1. So anyway, if, if you do that, then this becomes 2 pi times 2 Okay, 2 pi from that angular integration and 2 from that one. And then the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, dv times v squared f of v. And now this is the function that I indicated before is if you take the most probable, you ask for the most probable speed in an isotropic distribution function, the most probable speed of that is indeed v thermal. The final coordinate system we find useful is the so-called cylindrical velocity space coordinate system. And this is useful in magnetic field cases. 
And there what we have is that the integral over all velocity space will be the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta, the integral from 0 to infinity v perp dv perp, and the integral from minus infinity to infinity dvz. And the analogous real space coordinates are, of course, then theta, radius, uh, rdr, and dz, d theta, rdr, dz. So these are now, let me just say, real space analogs. Okay, with this sort of brief introduction to what we're trying to do and what distribution functions mean, what they kind of look like, what our velocity space uh, coordinate systems look like, uh, on kinetic theory, uh, next time we'll launch into the other parts of Chen's Chapter 7 and begin discussing kinetic type instabilities, well, kinetic type theory, Landau damping, and so forth and then evolve into kinetic instabilities.